What's up guys, Gabriel Varga here. Today I want to take you through a fade back when you're slipping the round kick, a fade back mistake that was made at one recently. A new up and coming star, Tawachai, was throwing the back leg round kick. His opponent went for the lean back, ended up getting knocked out because of a couple mistakes. And I want to make sure nobody else out there is making this mistake. So that is what we're talking about today. <laughs> Say it again, I want to re-emphasize this channel is not about bashing people for the mistakes they've made. I am pointing out mistakes so everybody else can learn. Everybody makes mistakes in fights. I have made them. We're going to talk about them in future episodes. So I'm not here to criticize the fighter who got KO'd. I'm just here to point out some mistakes and share with you guys how you can avoid getting KO'd in this fashion. So first, let's let it be said that Sean Clancy, I believe, he's the guy who gets KO'd. He is fighting an up-and-coming superstar. Tawan Chai is out of the San Chai gym, I believe, and he just looked super sharp really crispy really dangerous really calm somebody i need to break down in the future and share with you guys what makes him so good but for today we're not focusing on talent chai it was a nice kick and everything but we're focusing on the fade back now when i had my first world title fight i was prepping up for a french opponent who was a southpaw he threw a lot of head round kicks so constantly in camp we were working on fade back Fade back and it worked and I executed it beautifully in the fight. And my dad, who's not a massive part of my training camp anymore, in the fight, he kept yelling, stop dropping your hand, stop fading back because as you fade back, your hand drops and you think it exposes your head. But assuming you do this correctly, it really doesn't. But unfortunately for Sean in this fight, a couple mistakes were made. One of the big things that factored in here, I believe is the fact they were fighting in MMA gloves and not in a traditional boxing glove, which provides a little more coverage. But we'll talk about that in a moment. So first, let's talk about the fade back. The first thing we're looking to do in the fade back is to get our head out of the way. We're trying to create distance between the foot and our face. And we generally do that by putting weight on our back leg. As soon as I start with that motion, I put weight on my back leg, extra weight, my body moves very quickly backwards. Now, if I keep my body square, like I normally fight, or at least for myself, I keep it square and I put weight there, I end up in this weird sort of limbo position. So I also at the same time want to rotate my shoulders as I bend my knee. If I put the bend of the knee and the shoulder rotation together, I end up in a safer position. But this hand up here is not doing me much good. It's going to get caught by the kick. So I drop it and it will provide a nice counterbalance so I can get back up easier. But because I'm fading back and I'm dropping this hand, this side of my head becomes exposed. So it's good to utilize the shoulder. I find just tuck it up a little higher to protect the jaw on this side. Now it looks like Sean did all of that really well. The problem is what was this hand doing? Now the clips are fairly fast and there's not a perfect angle, but as best I can tell, as he fades back, this hand draws a little bit away from his jaw and just down a tad. And then the foot can just come around and clip him here. We wanna make sure that when we fade back, this hand is being a priority, that it's perfect. It needs to draw at least, I prefer, up to the temple level. I don't want it to come in front. I wanna keep it right there. And then once I've accomplished all that, I do my fade back, I rotate my shoulders, I drop my lead arm, I have my other hand in a nice tight position. From here, it's very hard for somebody with the kick to find my head. But something very important to keep in mind is what kind of gloves are you fighting in? If I'm fighting in a 10 or 8 ounce glove and I fade back, you can see all the coverage I get here. It is substantial. I only need to take this portion of the glove here, place it against my head, and there's not really anything that can happen. If I put my hand down here, yeah, there are definitely things that can happen. But with this MMA glove, if I put my hand up here, I should still be safe, but let's be real, the knuckles against the side of the head don't feel great either. But you guys can see from here, if I'm in my stance and I drop and I have this hair, it's so much smaller than before with that 10 ounce glove. So being very aware that this motion, this fade back is maybe not the best thing with smaller gloves, or at least if you are fading back, you need to be very, very sure that it's your forearm blocking your jaw and then the wrist and glove are blocking the rest of the head. As soon as I see a left round kick coming for myself, the left round kick's coming this direction, I go, okay, I'm gonna fade back instead of cross blocking. As soon as I do that, this hand is there. There is no opening here where I'm gonna get caught in the head and I need to be sure of one more detail. Obviously, I don't let my hand come too far in front, but I also don't let it come too far back because then the toes can come around the front, miss the forearm and still clip me. It's a very specific spot where the hand has to go. It's right about there. I kind of lose vision on you. So that 100% any kick that comes is not gonna wrap around the back, but it's not gonna catch me in the front. I prefer to put my hand right up above my temple. And from there, I feel completely protected and completely safe from any wrap 
ground kicks that are coming at head level as I fade back. So in training camp, guys, be very aware of what kind of fight you have coming up. Are you going to be in big boxing gloves or are you going to be in a small four ounce MMA glove? Because it does make a difference to the way you are going to deal with your head kicks. So guys, that's all from me today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you haven't already, get subscribed. As always, guys, train hard and I'll see you back here soon for another video.